Hey guys, welcome aboard the channel. I'm Evan Singer, one of the co-hosts of the Par Train Podcast. And today you're in for a real treat. If you're new, welcome aboard. We help frustrated golfers enjoy the ride again by unpacking the mental game with anyone from a PJ Tour Pro to someone like you and me, an everyday golfer. So today's episode will get you to it right away. It's all about aha moments, okay? It's all about those moments where something clicks and your game just goes to the next level. So make sure you watch to the end. If you like the video, hop aboard that subscribe train, like the video, comment for what you want to see in future episodes. And as always, guys, thanks for hopping aboard. Enjoy the ride. I'm actually pretty excited for this because yeah. we haven't done a chipping away in a while. We've had a lot of great guests and we've got some great guests planned, but this is one that's super personal to us that is based on some aha moments we've both had recently. Uh, I think we constantly learn a lot week to week um, from our guests, from yep. me personally with the coaching certification, from the guys I'm coaching, and in my own game. I think Rick, Rick Sessinghouse said it perfectly last week, right? It's easy to just be a coach and tell people what to do. It's harder to put it to practice. So every time yeah. that I play, I treat my own game as the ultimate case study to help our listeners, right? And if it's working for me, it's probably going to work for anyone because I've gone down any gambit, every gambit you possibly can in my golf journey. So I feel like I can empathize with any kind of golfer out there. And I think we got a lot of great stuff we're going to unpack for the part train listener to hopefully help yeah. their game. If we haven't done an episode like this in a while, you know, we love the chipping away series, but uh, I think it's good timing, you know, as we're really kind of kicking into gear in the season all across the country. Um, it's going to be a fun year, but this will be a good unpacking. Yeah. Well, why don't we just jump in? You want to yeah. just jump in? Oh, yeah. before we jump in, actually, we should say um, before we get into this episode, if we've added any value, Definitely give us a review at Apple Podcasts. It helps inspire others through your stories. And um, we post multiple times a day on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We're about to hit 10,000 on TikTok, 57,000 on Instagram. That's our biggest presence. And then 7,000 on Twitter. So wherever you great, like great numbers, get in your socials, uh, follow us at the part train, send us a DM comment, let us know how you're doing. I'll reply to every one of them. Or at least I'll do my best to. So. Um, thank you guys for that. And let's get to it, Sarm. I think uh, I was thinking about where to start. I think the best place to start is an aha moment I had recently. I made a video on this recently, but I want to share it on the podcast in case you guys don't follow us. Um, I, I had an aha moment listening to Hank, our intern, talk, and then yep. thinking about where I've been and thinking about you, right? It's a really great trio. Because Hank was previously an 11. I think he just got down to a nine. Oh. I'm a six, just became a seven, you're scratch. And so I think through our experiences, we kind of feel like we're touching a lot of different um, types of players. And I realized I don't talk about the game. I don't think about the game nearly nowhere close the way I did even two years ago. And I'll give you an example, sir. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the calls we used to have where I would, I would call you and I'd say, I found it. You know, I was constantly yeah. going to the range trying to find these little things to find and thinking it was the silver bullet, right? We've talked about it a lot on the show. I yeah. remember calling you saying, like, really breaking down my rounds. And again, there's nothing wrong with this, but it shows how attached I was to my performance and how much I identified with my performance, right? All I wanted there's nothing really I wanted more than to perform well on the golf course, get my handicap down, prove that I was a great player and do all these things, right? We've all put a lot of time and money into it. And right. I had a lot of attachment. So I used to call you and I'd be like, oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. I, I had like seven, eight footers. I had this many chances to get up and down. I chunked this, I scold that. I shot an 81. It could have been 76 easily. Right. Yeah. And we all do that. That's normal. Classic. But 
And we've made a video before about how like, oh, don't focus on just what you did wrong. Think about everything you did right. That's not what I'm saying. That's true. But that's not my point for this one. My point is, is that I don't think you and Ryan and the really great players that I know and also the pros we've had, you guys don't ruminate on your rounds like the 15 pluses, 12 handicaps, 20 handicaps do, right? You guys kind of just like, it is what it is. It's kind of a shrug and move on. It's like you guys know that golf is a game of misses. It's so cliche, but you know that you're going to leave shots out there every time. And it's just like, you know, you're a good player. You don't really care about, I mean, you might care, but you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's yeah. not as attached as the conversation that maybe Hank just had with us. Hey, Hank, I know you're listening uh, yeah. about him trying to break 80 or me two years ago. Can you see the difference? Like, I don't have those conversations with you anymore. Yeah, you've definitely changed in your attitude, post-round thinking. I mean, is it safe to say, Ev, I think you graduated from what a shoulda, coulda. Yeah, that's a good right? way to put it. And I think so many, that's really how most golfers react to their rounds. Um, you Once you get past that, you kind of sense of, get a sense of freedom and you kind of just let go and forget how good that round was or how bad that round was. Yeah. Um, it's really frustrating when I hear golfers, and you know, say, well, you know, I shot 83 and I had four lip outs. It's like, well, okay. So you had four missed putts there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, you might've had a lip in, you know, your, yeah. your ball might've hit the trees and kicked back into the fairway. I bet right. you had a couple of that. So I agree with you, Av. It's been, it's been pretty cool to watch you like just you're way less up and you're way less down. And yeah. I'm sure you've got some things you can attribute that to, but um, you seem way more at peace with your progression, whether you have those good days or bad. Well, yeah, let's dig into that for a second. Cause I think someone might be listening and think, well, okay, that sounds great in theory, but like, what's the alternative? I just don't care. Like, like Hank, for example, let's use Hank never broken 80. Really wants yeah. to break 80. He knows he's, play, he's good enough to break Playing great golf 80. right now, too. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I've been, I went through that. Like, how can I not, how am I constantly shooting 80 once? Like, I just got to put it all together, right? Right. I don't think I'm saying don't care. I think the difference is, is that my preparation and my practice is so much more intentional and on track with exactly what I know what I'm trying to do yeah. that. I don't feel like you're right. I have less highs and less lows and my, my bad rounds are less bad, right? I can still go out and shoot a great round, but I know that I'm going to have less swings and I think big yeah. swings in score. And I think let's start talking about maybe how our approach has changed. And we talked about this a little bit with Rick Sessinghouse, Colin Mark, I was coach last week. I think yeah. at least I have, I know you probably have too. I've become so much more educated on why, what I do, why I do it and how to practice and get better in those areas. So right. swing, let's say, full, let's start with full swing. Uh, we've said it before on the show, but for people to get a coach, and I know it's, people might see money signs when they hear that, but sure. I'm telling you, there is, there has not been a better investment than a coach for my game, or at least not even necessarily a, a dedicated ongoing coach, but someone that is experienced that you trust that can at least put you on the right path. So Jake Thurman, yeah. we've had him on the pod, Love DJ Jake. tour coach, um, Chicago guy, Chicago guy. He said something that really struck me when I got back from my trip from Bandon and what a great coach, by the way, doesn't send me any tips before I go to my yeah. trip, waits till I get back to send me uh, some swing things to work on. Uh, he said, do you see how you, your face rolls open and a little inside, which has always been a thing. Most amateurs it is. Um, and I used to try and manipulate, you know, the face, keep it closed and stuff. And he's like, the reason yeah. that's happening is because you're standing up. So your shoulders are parallel, right? My left shoulder isn't low enough. And when I do that, 
there's nowhere else for the club face to go, but inside and open. Right. So for me, focusing on keeping my left shoulder down and the face facing the ball or a little bit more square has dramatically improved my ball striking. And so when I'm practicing, let me me stop you though. And this is why getting a coach or at least taking a few lessons is so important. You're in the past. I'm like, all right, I, I know my club face is here. I got to, I got to figure a way how to manipulate it back square. He says, Hey, your setup, your trigger move is causing this, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, like it's always, you needed to understand that some of the mechanics, some of your tendencies, and it just gets back to the fundamentals, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like of the golf swing. So I think that's really important. So keep going, but that's huge. Right. Well, the domino effect, where is it coming from? Right. 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 And it's so, it's so key because how many of us see something on YouTube or hear a PGA tour broadcast and they're talking about DJ's bowed wrist and you're thinking, maybe I'll try bowing my wrist. And I've heard Colin Morikawa say on video with DJ, he goes, I don't actively try and bow my wrist. It just happens. It's how my swing is. And so many of us are out there trying stuff with no idea of what, what we do, why we do it and where we need to go. So the simple clarity and really confidence because I, I have certainty there, right? There's no uncertainty with what I'm working on, why I'm doing it. I just know that I got to keep my left shoulder down. It's a tendency that I probably have from baseball standing up and work on keeping my face square. Yeah. And good tempo. And that's it. So, well, yeah. I mean, I think it's what's really, I think in your progression, a combination of understanding your swing, get good coaching fundamentals, why you do the, what you do. But then I, th- this has been a big thing for me. Of, and as, as I've, you know, throughout my career, quote unquote, but tell me if you are doing a better job of this. Cause I think this is big for Hank. And for a lot of players right now, for everybody, it's the post round reflection, right? Instead of coming off the course, you know, I shot, I, I played great, but I had three bad holes and two lip outs. Thinking about not just the bad shots, we love the bad shots, but also the good shots throughout your round and thinking about how you felt in your pre shot routine over the ball when you hit that 300 yard high cut off the tee. And then when you hit that, 20 yard pool with a six iron left to the green. What, where was your head? Where was your mind? What were you unsure of? What were you sure of? And when you were, that's the way to reflect on your rounds. I mean, Hank is ready to shoot 79. He bogeys the last hole. Right. He says he just didn't get up. He made a tentative swing in the fairway. Didn't get up and down. Well, what, what were you feeling? What was your preparation? What, What was your breath? Like how fast were you moving? (laughs) <laughs> compared to all those other great holes. Right. And to me, that's, that's where you really see progression. Cause you really understand what's happening out there and you learn from that. Yeah. Situational also, awareness. Yeah. And like we've done on the mailbag episodes, like what can we do for Hank the next time he has a chance to break 80 on 18, right? We've talked about it before there. Nothing in his life will change. We have this illusion that once, we right. achieve these markers, we're going to be different people, different golfers, more, more fulfilled, happier. Of course, you want to achieve those things. There's nothing wrong with that. But the romanticism, is that a word? Yeah. Romanticism of these achievements are getting in the way, right? And so to your point about what we're working on, the, the thing to tie a bow in the full swing part of this conversation is checkpoints. It's so key. Like not only does Jake give me the why, the what, and how to work on it, but he gives me checkpoints on video because video can mess a lot of people up, but video is also really helpful if you know what you're looking for. Right. So then when I go to the range, I say, okay, well, Jake always told me like, okay, you're a push drawer. So if you're doing everything right, you should be hitting a little draw. If you start hitting fades, something's off, right? And I started doing that the last rank yeah. session. I was a little tight, like we talked about 
we'll get to that in a second of like how to react, not just after rounds, but after practice sessions, you know, but at least I know when I look at the video, what I'm working on and what I'm checking, because that's going to be my guide to see if I'm in the right direction. Right. A lot of people, you're just kind of out there like testing stuff. You have no idea what you're looking for. And it's a waste of time. I wasted years practicing like that. And I'm hoping that people listen to this episode, realize that they can cut down that time for them. Well, right. Yeah. And, and in terms of instruction, I'll just, I guess I harp on this kind of stuff, but I'll take it a step further. It's like, I think a lot of our listeners have, have taken a lesson before. Right. And might say they know how to grip the club and they know how to stand and they know how to align themselves up, but it doesn't have hurt to have refreshers. I was watching a Rick Shields video of how to have a neutral grip. I know what a neutral grip is, but like sometimes a visual, a refresher, because I played what two days ago, nine holes, first round in a couple of months, first round in Chicago. And I hit some just big pulls with my irons. Like, New this irons, bad. Yeah, new irons, but just some big pools, you know. And I got to the range the other night, and I'm with my buddy Connor, and he's like, "Man, your shoulders are closed." <laughs> and I was then looking at my grip. I was like, "Man, I'm too strong with my left hand. I got three knuckles showing." So alignment and grip, right? So <laughs> even I consider myself a good player, but what does Rick Sessing house talk about? What do all the coaches we have on talk about? The pros, Brett McCabe. The pros just obsessed about the fundamentals. Yeah. So for you and our listeners, you can, it never stops. Like, and I, you need to be, do you really understand how to set up to the golf ball? Do you really know where you're going? <laughs> you know? And I think those are the most valuable insights and questions, but it's over and over and over again, because clearly I don't play in a few months. And I've got closed shoulders. I've got a strong left hand. And if I get a little quick, that ball's going left fast. You know, that's where my bogeys, I made a double came from. So, but Ev, I could have been like, if you would have put my swing on camera, I could have been like, whoa, boy, he's going really inside. He's really laid off. You know, he's coming over the top on it. But why is that? It doesn't help. (laughs) You know, (laughs) that I'm, the club face is going to the target, but my shoulders are going way right. And my grip right. is <laughs> so what do you think about all that? You know, I'm just, I think that's just, I think it's really important though. Well, you know what it makes me think of, sir? It makes me think of what Rick, I know we brought up Rick a million times, but it's fresh. We had him on last week. He told us something very interesting about Colin, where he said, Colin experienced something at Kapalua at the beginning of the year, downhill lie with long iron. Very so, hilly golf course. So we, specific. Let's right? think about the 18th hole as a perfect example. That second shot. Yeah. Super specific. But what did it reveal? It revealed something where a shot or ability was not up to his standards, but the discomfort level was high. Right. Correct. And I think, I think about everything we just talked about. And I really want to reflect on the why, the why that I have more confidence, the why that I feel less uh, up and down. I just have, I probably have the most belief in my game that I've ever had, but I'm shooting pretty much similar scores so far, right? I'm not yeah. that different than where I was two years ago. I've been hovering around a five to a seven for probably five years, right? But here's what's different I had so much discomfort around the greens before. Yeah. But I had this flawed belief that I needed to get my swing right, my ball striking right before I focus on the short game. And you saw right. I just post that video today. Like, I can't tell you how much that has changed my ability to stay even keel and have fun with the game. It's short game. Yeah. Because now I love the chance. I love being the guy in the group that I like. I know I'm put in. I haven't even like. I haven't put in enough time that I think I could, but I've yeah. just started to split my range time with short game time. Kind of a 50, 50 now, 50, 50. And yep. I tell you what, sir, I love being the guy in the group that I know I'm going to put it four to six feet. Yeah. I might stick it, but I know I'm going to give myself looks. 
I, I have more of an understanding of how to use the bounce. I, I need to get more comfortable in the bunkers for sure. I think I'm digging a little too much. I need to understand that. But do you see how I'm like chipping away? Speaking of chipping away at of areas of discomfort and I'm putting in time to become more comfortable. Well, let me ask you this, Ev. What, what is your goal? Is it to get from a seven handicap to a four handicap or is it to be better at short game? Yeah. I mean, right. To, you know, to have a goal of like, you know, maybe it's a statistical goal. Hey, you know, yeah. how, many, you know how many 30 putt rounds can I have? Or can I get five up and downs in a round? Right. What is your, and I think this is an important, you know, it's, you're always going to think about your handicap, but what do you like? Cause there is a shift, a positive shift happening with you. Yeah. That's a good question. I haven't thought about my goal. Let's hash it out live. So I think my one big goal, and we can talk about this because this has been another transformation. Thanks to John at mental golf type Love those was guys. driver, right? Not even just like, I don't care about the number of fairways I hit. I don't care about the distance. It was simply just a belief and a comfort that I didn't want to play with as much fear anymore. I want to, I want to feel like if I need to hit the driver and the, the whole calls for a driver, I can hit it and keeping my misses a little bit tighter and reducing the big, the not reducing or eliminating the big miss because the pros have a big miss. So like, that's not a great expectation, but the amount of times it happens, right. I wanted to become a little bit more confident with my T game, because that's going to open up a lot. You want to up the amount of fearless driver yes. swings in your yes. round. And we can go into that because right. Tara told Tara um, filmed me. I just did my first ever course vlog uh, last weekend. I shot a 79 that and we fun. did this fun exercise. I said, if I commit 90% of my shots, I'm going to record every shot. Was I committed or not? If I can get over 90% commitment, I bet you I'll break, break 80. And, and you did it. I, I don't know. I need to calculate the commitment percentage. I, I need to go back, but I shot a 79. Um, and that also counts with pitching yeah. and chipping and bunker, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And, putt. and putting. Yeah. So, but she <laughs> told me, she's like, you, and she's seen it all. Like I played a lot of golf with her and her dad. She's like, your driver is like so different than yeah. what it's been. Um, just like my misses, my, conviction with the club well yeah because you know what you know what you want to do you found through the help of the mental golf guys you found a thought process yeah, right on a process that, yeah that you're con- comfortable with that then translate to making an aggressive fearless driver move yeah a lot of that was mental but so i'll get well, that for sure. in a second it's all that, mental. that's one goal <laughs> second goal i think is I want to be known as a guy with great touch. I want to be known. So I think for you, sir, that is the coolest thing to be known as, in my opinion, is like the guy that can get up and down from anywhere. I've already been known as the guy that's in the trees and somehow punches four irons to like the front of the green. And they're like, I don't know how he's doing this. I got a lot of practice with that, but I want to be known as the guy that can get up and down from anywhere that's got great touch and the recovery. Cause it's just, it's so fun. It makes the game so fun. Yeah. You know, and understanding, you know, I'm starting to get more comfortable with where I put it in my stance, different clubs, light arms versus a little bit more, you know, firm. You're right. Arms or stands are going to be aggressive. Are we going to be yeah. conservative? Just like, you're just like, kind of like, bathing in the options right yeah yeah <laughs> in the fun of what the short game can be yeah and so i think i no longer have the goal of being a scratch and the beautiful thing about it is i know i will be i will get closer to becoming a scratch as i let that go just like hank will break 80 when he lets that go that's how it works right that's the tricky thing everyone thinks this mental game stuff is so easy it's simple but it's not easy it can be difficult but it's yet so simple that's the magic of it right the less you want to do something the easier it is to do it well, so, right. 
and you know, whether it was, you know, Hank, the last hole making bogey to shoot 80, we've all been there, whether it's whatever score it is, but whatever number, you know, or milestone you're trying to hit, but okay. Nerves got to him. Happens to me. Happens to you. Yeah. Think about the rest of the round, right? Think about those stuff. mental, think about the, the good stuff. It's like, well, there's probably a mental error here or a wrong club there or a lack of attention there. So you don't have to, it's easy to dwell on the why the last hole, why do I let the pressure get to me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. When, I'd rather, I'd rather focus you know, that energy of it. It got to me. Yeah. But what do I have in my toolbox to address it the next time it's going to come up? Cause guess what? There's no, it's not valuable or productive to resist it because guess what? What's it? Yeah. It's a He's going to have a chance to do it again. Right. And that same feeling is going to come back. So how can we give our listeners tools so that when it comes back, they got something to go with. Right. And mm-hmm. I, I was just on the safe par uh, podcast this week. It's coming out tomorrow. And love I love that. Them, we love like, that name. Yeah, exactly. The one thing that Rick Sessinghouse told us the first time he came on the show is first tee jitters. We all have them, but what's a thought you can lean into? Hold your finish. That's a physical executional thought that gives your swing balance and tempo, right? That's a great focus for moments of pressure. Tempo. Uh, For me, should we get into what I've been working on with the driver? Yeah, just last thing I'll say, just to close loop here, is one hole. Should never never defines you. How good right. it is, how good that hole is, or how bad that hole is. Now, multiple bad holes, you know, or multiple good right. holes, you be aware. But right. for our guy Hank, you're right there. One hole doesn't define you. Yeah, he'll he'll break it any day, any day oh, yeah. now. So I think I've talked about this process before uh, that John helped me with. But the one thing I want to hammer home with the driver, because look, guys, like. I, I can't reiterate this enough. I was legitimately hitting maybe two, three fairways around if I was lucky. Okay. And I'm talking people listen to this show that have played with me have seen tops. They've seen snap hooks. They've seen big blocks and I was striping it on the range. Okay. So clearly I was having an unconscious stress response anytime the driver was getting my hands and it actually wasn't, this is the interesting thing, sir. It wasn't as much driven by fear. It was more so, God, can I just do what I've seen on the range? I want to yeah. replicate it so bad that I was creating the same stress response as trying to not miss it. Interestingly enough. So right. I think the most powerful thing that I want to hit home here is so many people hear about self-talk and they think, well, why would I lie to myself? I really can't hit a fairway. I've been doing it for two years. But John helped me. The most powerful three words he ever said to me was act as if. Act as if. Yeah. How would you act as if you were hitting a perfect drive? You've hit a perfect drive before. How did that feel? Okay. Take that feeling into this shot and act as if you're the baddest, best driver of the golf ball that's ever lived. And I started doing that and I shifted my focus up. We've talked about it. I'm trying to break the glass in the sky instead of looking down at the hole. That's really freed me up. It's helping me with big zones based on my mental golf type instead of small targets and where not to miss it. And now what am I doing? I'm taking an aggressive and confident energy feeling into my drives and I'm looking up and I have an approach that serves me. And now do I miss fairways? Sure. But am I missing them in a more playable spot? And am I play, am I playing golf now instead of snap hooking it and blocking it? And you can't play golf that way. Trust me. I've done it for years. Well, right. But look what, look what you look at the progression you made in your short game first. Yeah. You know, you, you miss a green for a while. They're like, man, I don't have that shot or, you know, I'm just going to try to flop it and see what happens. But now you're, you've you got self-talk like, Hey, I, know, I think I can get up and down here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've got two different shots that, you know, I can yeah. work with here. So like, that's just a, that's a combination of practice and self-talk. 
Yeah, but you know what's so when, great when about the, that when point? you're in the moment. Here's what's so great about that point. You start by acting as if, well, really, you start by practicing, right? Yeah. You put in the time, you address the areas of discomfort. Your only goal is to become a little bit more comfortable. Correct. I don't care how many up and downs, you don't need to become a scratch, like become more comfortable. Right. Comfort first. Find then familiarity. Then yeah. positive self talk, visualizing, feeling it, what it would feel like to be a great short game artist, to be a great driver of the golf ball. Act as if. Then you take that into your shots in the moment, on the course, under the gun. And what happens? You start to see some good stuff. Then what happens? Belief, right? With belief starts to come confidence, starts to come snowball, momentum. Right. Sooner or later, I'm a great driver of the golf ball. Right. I'm a great short game guy. It, 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 it translated into your driver. and Look, you're going to go through struggles again like I would, or like anybody would. You're going to have those off days, but now, you know, because of the work you've put in the recipe to get yourself, you know, back on track, get that train back on the tracks. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's pretty putting. cool. Ev. It's pretty cool. I don't know how talk like, about putting. Yeah. How you're starting to well, that's next to actually truly understand the game, you know, how to practice, how to think, how to respond. Yeah. Putting. I've never seen you work harder on your putting. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I didn't make, know how. And make some improvements too, because I you showed me some things I was just <laughs> <laughs> wait. What was the craziest thing I showed you? This is good. I mean, multiple just lots the of different grips. Yeah, lots of different grips, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> saying he's found it in the hotel room or in his house, he's gonna do yeah. the claw. <laughs> well, here's but, Here's the funny thing that that's another example. And I'm not saying the claw can't work for people, but sure. Sure. You said you found it, but I was doing <laughs> it with no reasoning. I right. just tried it and it felt good. Right. And I, I started treating, here's the, another aha moment for you, sir. I realized I had never seen my putting stroke on video. I had never yeah. had someone look at my putting stroke. I had never worked on my putting stroke in a way that I'm working in my swing. I had no understanding of it. I had no reason of why I do things. So my story I've told on this before, but just to bring it all together, I went to Pinehurst. I met, uh, I met Matt Picanso, um, Pisconso. I don't know if I got that right. I think it's Pisconso uh, on the corn ferry. Yep. Been, and I was like, Hey man, just take a look at my stroke. What do you see? I don't understand why I go inside. And I was super far away from the ball. So there was nowhere else for it to go. He's like, I need you to stand closer to the ball. I need your eyes right over the inside of that ball. Hold on. It's the chopper. And he said, and I went back to a conventional grip to just like, Hey, I'm an athlete. So let's just, do what helps me feel comfortable. Cause I found that with the claw, it was really rigid and stiff and didn't feel good. It felt jabby. There was no rhythm. Right. So I was listening to that. I'm like, let's just go back to the basics. Let's work on fundamentals. And guess what he did? Fundamentals. Guess what he did? He goes closer to the ball over your eyes over it. And he gave me a, he had me work on a putter putting plate. I think it's called. Yeah. Um, and this is what you see all the pros using. And I used to think, what are these guys working on these things for, like, right before a round? Like, isn't that too heady? But no, it's yeah. the opposite. They're right. grooving fundamentals. Correct, Ev. Light they're, bulb. Yeah. So, he, so you stand closer. You actually get your eyes over the ball, which is number one, you know, when you think about putty. Yeah. And all of a sudden, my stroke is less loopy. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I'm not trying to not loop it. I'm just grew. I'm, I'm gaining awareness, education and checkpoints. Right. But then I put it on video and now this is, I'm, I'm telling you, sir, this is going to change. This is going to be at the beginning of the show. I was like, I'm not going to say it's going to change my game, but I truly know <laughs> in my heart that this is going to make me a different golfer. Yeah. And here's what I love about the putter plate. Okay. Some people don't love the putter plate because it's got the gate at the beginning or 
you know, the start line and you hit the gate a lot, it can be uh, frustrating. The whole point is to the gate's not that much wider than the ball. So if you can roll that ball through the gate without hitting the pegs, you're starting your ball on your line. That's really all you need to do in putting. Obviously there's distance control and stuff, but that's a number one, right? And what I love about it is I don't need a hole. I don't need a mat. I just have, they gave me an indoor and an outdoor one. So when I'm inside, I'm using, I'm grooving this thing. So it helps me with alignment. I put it right up to the putter plate. There's a bunch of planes flying over right now. Uh, Sorry, just sirens out here. Uh, I'm grooving my start line and it's fun because I don't care if the ball goes in. I have zero concern with making a putt. Wow. And now my practice is harder than when I play and I go and I play and all I'm worried about is stroking it on my line. That's it, man. And, and I played in a scramble two weeks ago and I was making everything. God, nothing like the hero in the scramble group, you know, making yeah. all the putts. Just yeah, saving right. The team. <laughs> And here's the funny thing. Here's how you, here is progress. So I played in this event where you had to pick a position you're going to play T guy, approach guy, short game guy. And it made me really reflect on my game. Like, okay, if I was only going to be one of those for the whole round, what guy would I be? And Mm. I was like, I think I should be short game guy. And that's a huge shift. I would have never said that six, even six months ago to a year ago. And the only change I want to hit this home with our listeners. The only thing I've done differently is I've done it more. I've split my range time by 50%. This is something we talked about at the start of the year. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I resisted it. I I was challenging you. I think I was saying like 73, you're like, Oh, maybe, maybe 64. (laughs) You're like, well, but you're doing 50, 50, right? You actually understand, but you're starting to understand the fundamentals of all parts of the game. Yeah. Well, that's, what's cool is because you're always uh, showing me a new grip or a new takeaway or a new stroke. Yeah. You know, isn't it crazy? The power of knowing what you're working on and continually doing the same things and then having the same thoughts over shots and you might have it that day. You might not but at least you have your back to basics that you can always go back to Matty P the corn fairy guy I talked about. He told me anytime his putting's off, he goes to the plate. Yeah. And he's good. Right. Like what a, cause it, it reveal, it reveals what an amazing yeah. relief of right. having certainty. And sure there might be times that I still need to figure stuff out. I'm not hitting the ball perfectly. No one is, right. but at least I have certainty and confidence in what I'm doing. And I know that I'm putting the time in, in the right parts of my game. And there's probably going to be days, probably pretty soon that I have an off day and I shoot a 76. I have an off day. I shoot a 77 versus an 84. And my index is going to slowly go down and I'm going to get closer to shooting even par. I know it. I'm on the right path, but guess what? Here's the funny difference. I don't care. Right. Like, yeah, I want to do it, but I have, I have zero attachment to doing it because you're, you've shifted your focus and you're so caught up in just getting better at the fundamentals of your putting stroke and of your golf swing. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Mentally and physically, you've simplified the physical part big because you used to just go in circles. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. And you used to joke. Cermak used to joke with me, guys, everyone that's listening. He used to tease me that every coach we had on the show (laughs) was like my new coach. And I went deep on their methodology through researching in the show. And I would be trying new stuff every week. And I just, you know, it's a really fun way to play golf is understanding what you do, understanding why you do it, practicing those fundamentals, having checkpoints, checking yourself on video. And then going and seeing and learning from what you see on the course, but not having as much. I used to really, sir, like more than anything in the world, I used to want to be a scratch golfer more than I think you were, you were kind of alluding to that this before even our episode today. I was just wondering where your mind and your kind of thoughts were going to go. And I think you vocalizing this realizes this is just can't be me. Yeah. Right. How could you want to go from a scratch? And you're a seven anyways. 
Right. Well, I think, I think the you know, funny uh, thing is I wanted to be so badly the success story, right? I wanted to show our listeners and our followers that I can do it. I'm talking, I'm walking the walk, right? But I think now I realize the power in going off path because now we can do an episode like this and I'm just like them, but I'm starting to do things. I think the more productive, efficient way. Right. You know, I think you're hundred percent right. You know, for me, I've, I mean, I've, I've been scratched, but I'm like, I'm a 0.4 right now. <laughs> you know, I've actually been trending a little bit up. So yeah, to protect, you know, for, for a choice of words to protect scratch, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I've got to kind of, I've kind of been, you know, I've got to figure out what's, you know, where are those two or three shots I'm losing around, you know? Right. Um, and a lot it's, of it, Ev, it's a, it's a lot of pitching and chipping in bunker. And I'm good at those things, but I don't practice as enough as I should. And I've realized one of my goals is I'm just going to try to dedicate it a couple Saturdays this summer to doing two, three hours of short game. You know, going down and that's it. You know, I don't even need to hit balls. Doing yeah. that and just making um, – sometimes you just got to just check yourself at the door and make tough decisions like – for example, I was playing nine holes and I hit this pool into the bunker left bunkers, deep bunker, can't see the bottom of the cup. And I'm just coming off a bad bogey and there's like five feet of green to work with. I'm thinking, okay, I just got to hit it right at the pin. The last minute I kind of shifted and tried to go at it. And what did I do? I chunked it. And then I didn't get up and down. Right. So yeah. I'm realizing, you know, if I end up being to get to a one or two handicap, that's a couple strokes around that, you know, I just got to be better around the greens. So that's, it's kind of my big focus for the year uh, is working more on the short game. Cause this is the year of the short game yeah. and, and swap and just taking my medicine sometimes out there. Cause I know well, I, you know, I can, I can make putts, but yeah. yeah. So I wanted to well, share that with you. That was my initial learning for my first round, you know, pretty much of the year. Well, know, let me Chicago. challenge you. I'm going to challenge you real quick. Okay. Because I think, and that's great. I think if you're going to want to spend two to three hours in the short game area once or twice, you know, once a week, once every couple of weeks, I think that's amazing. I'm going to do that this weekend. But I think the trap we fall into, a lot of people like you, is going from zero to two to three hour sessions. I would challenge you that even just once a week, 20 minutes could make a huge difference than going from one, it, it's almost like with working out. A lot of people say this is a common mistake where you say, okay, I, like I'm doing it right now for the wedding, right? Like, God, I, I really want to work out every day. And you right. start by doing like an hour workout really hard. And guess what happens? You're so sore from doing the hard workout that you don't work out the rest of the week. And then you don't build your momentum, which yeah. instead it's almost more, better to do like 20 to 30 minute sessions four or five, six days a week, keep your momentum. And then you're actually building up more time with less long, with shorter sessions than starting yourself with the expectation that you got to do three hour sessions. Yeah. You might do three hour sessions, but I just think it's interesting for people to think about where it's like, you say, I want to do this, but make it easier on yourself too. You know? Yeah. I mean, it all depends, right. You know, how often you can get to the course, how, how close you live to the golf course. Right. But for me, when I don't practice short game, that's, I lose the feel on those 30 yard pitches. I don't have the familiarity. Right. And then you're playing, you know, there's just so many situations, you know, short, rough, long, rough, behind the bunker, next to the bunker, buried bunker lies. Like it's stuff that it's not like ping pong or shooting a free throw where it's always there. Yeah. So now whether like you said, if it's a, if it's a couple 20 minute sessions or if it's one long two hour session, have the purpose. What am I working on? What do I want to get out of this today? You know, because the whole idea is to, to feel more familiar when I Comfort. go, you know, play that next round. You know, I'm right. not going to execute every time, but right. it's, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a commitment. And you well, got to find even, out what's right for you. I've even had the internal struggle of I get to the range. It's on a weeknight. I'm like, I got to get back for dinner or I got to do something for work. I got to get back. I can't stay for an hour and a half. I'm like, I really would, I would love to just hit a bucket of balls and leave, you know, 
But I'm like, yeah. all right, well, instead, just do 20 minutes. Yeah. Go over to the short game area for 20 minutes. And yeah, I think get for 20 minutes in. I think for like our listeners, that's absolutely it. You yeah. know, that's absolutely it. Just start start a new habit. Yeah. Because if you're that guy or you're that girl who just like I said, goes to an hour, beats balls, works on your swing, then it goes. Start that 20 minutes. See how it feels. A, a few chips, a few putts. Isn't it amazing to have what I think you can learn about yourself when you practice golf the yeah. right way efficiently. And now, especially with short game, like just like you can translate it and, and into your day-to-day life with pick, you know, with your job, with, you know, just being disciplined and committed and, you know, kind of always going the extra mile a little bit. Yeah. And I would urge people, you know, a lot of people don't know how to practice. They don't know where to start. Uh, I would say, I think uh, our chipping away my short game breakthrough is a great episode to maybe listen yeah. to. Um, but I think just start with experimentation and feels, you know, like have fun with it, test it out, make a game out of it, understand yeah. this, make the same swing with a different club. And that's what I started doing, sir. And that's made the biggest difference for me is how can I take the shortest swing, the lightest arms, and make my job as easy as possible with taking a little bit more club and letting the, the club do the work. And so get now I have different shots, 56, 52, 60. Getting that ball on the ground as quick as possible. Yeah. A lot of the time for all you, you know, well, that's that so comfort chippers out there, you know, go drop a few balls and hit those nine irons, hit those eight irons. And I've got a 50 foot chip. You don't have to, you know, less room for error. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you've got to work on it. So they'll never be familiar. So I don't know. I mean, it's great. This is uh it's going to be a fun year, but I think the progression you've made just these last couple months. But here's the other thing. It's huge. It's huge. I want to end with this. Yeah. It's also easy for me to say all this great stuff and then put more pressure on myself when I play because I'm feeling good. I've done the work, right? But that's where the attachment comes in. That's where the mental work comes in. Because I'm telling you, we both have member guests this year. Yeah. I'm good. I'm really excited to take a new renewed approach at my member guests. Like I don't need to prove myself. There's less imposter syndrome going on. I'm going to lean into my short game. I don't need to have the perfect swing going in. I don't need to find it. What I have yeah. is enough. Yep. I don't need to focus on or worry about what holes I get pops on. Play the course, play golf, do what That's you know, it. hit the shots you're comfortable with and let it fire. You're going to have tentative moments. You're not going to commit on certain shots. Your partner may not think the same way as you in every situation, but how can I just keep coming back to what I know and what I do best? Yes. And that's a good mindset and being a good athlete. Right. And that's it. Now that you know how to practice, it's always something you can lean on, you know, yeah. when you're out of the course. Hey, I know how to do this. You right. know, right. Like it's so it, telling. I know what it takes. I, you know, it's it, so it is, telling, sir, that last year at my member tell guest, yourself that. I played knockdowns the entire, I'm talking driver knockdowns, three wood knockdowns. Mm. And I stuck to that the entire week. Cause I thought it was more consistent. Why do you think I was so uncomfortable? Why would I play three rounds or three days worth of tournament tournament golf a way that I've never played before? Why would I do that? Right. It's because I didn't think that I, my game was enough right. as it was, you know, and now it's like, all right, let's play my game. Play your game, do your routine, trust your process, work on fundamentals. Sir, we need to get you a putter putting plate. I want to see you groove yeah, in the putter yeah. plate at home. My brother Joe might have one. I got to see if he's got one. We get some footage of that because you can't do enough. Yeah. Guys, if there's anything you take from this episode, you know, from what we're working on, but just ups- just obsess over the fundamentals. And, you know, and like I've said, just start that short game work. Yeah. You know, doesn't hurt, you know, don't go down the rabbit hole like you all do on Instagram of watching all these like, oh, you know, do this move for the most power or, you know, swing like DJ. Don't you, do, you, do you really know how to hold the, hold the club right? Do you really know how to stand? Do you really understand ball position? That your ball position from an eight iron is different than a five iron? <laughs> it's supposed to be a little more up in your stance. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
guys, just start thinking that way, you know, or just get some, you know, invest in a lesson or a guy yeah. or a gal you, you trust. If you need help with that. Yeah. yeah. And get, get more aware. Like I did understand why you do things and start chipping away at those things and have some, and lean into comfort too. Chipping you know away. what you're uncomfortable with. Get more Chipping comfortable away. and believe in yourself. Act as if. All right, sir. Well, this was great. I'm really glad that we got all this out. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys yeah. listening. And uh, send us messages on Instagram. It's probably the best place at the part train. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know what you're working on. And uh, I make, the, I mean, this year is the year of the short game, but I think it's also the year of getting more comfortable and working on the right things, you know? Yeah. So, sir, no I'm matter how, to practice. how uncomfortable you feel now, the negative things you tell yourself, the uncertainty of what to work on, what do they got to do in between all the stuff we talk about on this show? Just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, guys. Take care.